The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Caleb Clark, and in today's episode, we will be building a DIY label roller. My wife works from home as a shipping manager, and she prepares several hundred or more packages a day. Each package requires a label to be printed, and she does these in a large batch. The Dymo label printer feeds all of these labels onto the floor, which she then has to roll up by hand so she can access them in a more efficient way. If you can imagine, this gets pretty old pretty quick. Cramps in the hands and horrible paper cuts, and of course the wasted time and boredom of spending half an hour each day rolling up labels. So I thought I'd jump in and over-engineer a solution for her. Let's take a look at what we have to do. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. We're going to design and build something similar to this concept. There's a chassis, there's a spindle, there's a gear for the spindle, and a gear for the motor. All of those parts we're going to 3D print. The way that this is going to work is she'll take the label, slide it through this infeed slot, wrap it around the spindle, and then the spindle will slot into these two slots here. The gear on the spindle will mesh with the gear on the motor, and then she can control the direction of it via foot switch and a double pull, double throw switch. When it's in the up position, it will go forward, down position, it'll go in reverse. Let's get to building this thing. Well, we've got everything designed and 3D printed. Uh, it's ready to assemble now, but let's take a look at the 3D printed parts first. This came out pretty good, except for two things. One was a uh, mistake on the printer's part, which it has one shift here. This is not intentional, this line. And the other thing is mistakes that I made. So the first one is uh, these slots were originally the same size and that was intentional, but later in the design, I changed the diameter of this side of the, the spindle and didn't fix the slot. So after it printed, it wouldn't fit in there. I had to trim these down and sand it and even lower that a little bit so that the spindle would fit in there level. For that, I used these awesome files that I get at a local beauty supply. I have a bunch of different shapes and sizes of these things. Got my whole set for like less than seven bucks. So if you're looking for files for PLA, these work great. The features on this, the infeed keeps the label straight as it's going in and prevents vertical movement on that. Got a motor mount with the holes going through this side so I can get a tool in there to put the screws in. Have a spot for the switch to go in, power supply connector. And the second thing that I screwed up on is not having a hole right here for the foot switch. No problem, we'll just drill a hole, have some grommets to put in there, it'll be just fine. Next part is the spindle. Put a little flange on there so it's easy, easier to guide in. And this is the part that I added. So this was the original diameter, and then this is the new diameter that actually rests in here, this space the gear fits on. Speaking of the gears, let's take a look at those. And by the way, that's how that goes in. It's the gear for the spindle, nothing special gear for the motor. It works great when they're meshed really tightly, but on this, they're going to be slightly separated. Just give, make it a little bit smoother. This just press fits on. It will rotate on there, but once we're done testing everything, we will 
take this back off, put a little bit of epoxy on there and then it'll be permanent. This is gonna press fit onto the motor as well. This doesn't require a lot of torque, so the press fit should be just fine. But once it's all tested, I'll take the motor off, put some epoxy on it, make it permanent. We should mount the motor. That is gonna be the first thing to happen. And it's gonna be a little bit tricky just because of the steps and that a couple of the screws are on the inside of this gear. So we have to put the motor in. This is the motor that I'm using. I had this around. It happened to be the perfect motor for this application. So these two screws are almost right behind this gear. Uh, I can get an Allen wrench through the slots if I rotate it what once it's on there, but I can't get the screw in between here. So we have to do a little bit of a dance to get that going. And got some mounting hardware here. We gotta put these two screws in first. And then we can put the motor on, press fit the gear in, and then tighten them down. And there is enough clearance in there. Awesome. And it's engaging. Great. Hi, my name is James and this is my electronics workbench. Together, we host Workbench Wednesdays. It is a show where I review electronics tools and equipment. Whether you are on a hobbyist budget or trying to equip a professional workstation, we've got you covered. Look for new episodes on Wednesdays and come connect with me at element14.com slash workbench Wednesdays. Now let's put the uh, foot switch grommet in there and wire. We'll need to drill a hole. I have this little tiny grommet. It's rubber. We'll make that work. First we should see what size of drill bit we should use. And you want to measure this inside part do that. 2.35 inches. I want freedom units. There you go. 6.2. I have metric drill bits, so we'll go 6.5. Make it a little bit easier to get in there and the outside diameter that is much greater. This is a case for my nice drill bits that I 3D printed, designed and 3D printed. This should be 6.5, yep. And remember, when drilling holes in PLA, always go slow, because you will melt the plastic. I'm gonna use this wire, because it's what I have, and it'll work just fine. It's rated plenty for this, so. And the switch, because of the size of the area that I'm working with here, I didn't want to make this hole the exact size for the tabs on the switch. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. I wanted this to be as short and small and compact as possible. So we're gonna modify the switch a little bit so it'll fit in there. Uh, we'll probably put a little bit of hot glue on there to keep it in because the tabs we're removing are designed to make it stay in there. But I wanted to keep this short and small. I would have had to make this another like four millimeters taller to use those tabs that are on the switch. And this is the switch that I'm going to use. This is a DPDT switch and so this is how we're going to control the direction of the motor. Center is going to be off, forward, and reverse. And then of course the foot switch, hit the foot switch and it will activate only when it's in forward or reverse. And these are the tabs that I'm talking about. These four tabs. This hole is for these dimensions. This here by this here. This should be easy enough to just cut these off. Now, let me check to see if that actually fits. And it does. The power connector is this here. It's a little 5.5 mil barrel and I have a power supply to go with this. I didn't want to tie it in so she could store this when she's not using it. 
pull that out, test fit this piece. Let's see how funny comical this is for me to work at these weird angles. There, that fits there. All right, that's gonna fit just fine. Everything test fits. And now what we need to do is wire the thing up. First thing we need to do on the wiring is wire up the switch. We're gonna connect this pin to this pin, this pin to this pin, motor will go here, ground and power. Uh, the ground is gonna be broken by the foot switch and that's how we'll control that part. So let's tend this up and get it ready to solder on the jumpers. Finish wiring on this, we need to tie in the power connector, the foot switch, and solder the motor leads onto here. I've already done some testing on this to see which pin goes where. This is positive and this one is negative. Master. Yeah, that is really nice. I have to open it up to get to the contacts. Push, remove, wire, replace. Yeah, look at that. That's cute. This has got a piece of metal bent over the little switch on the top of that micro switch. And when you push down on it, it just drags this forward and pushes the button. That's pretty cool. So we have normally closed and normally open, and this is common here. So we want to be normally open because when we hit the switch, it will close the circuit. Okay, that's there. Clamp this down, some strain relief. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I can hear the switch engaging, so I put that together, right? Are we ready to try this? Test it? I think we are. Let's look at the power supply that we got for this, a 12 volt power supply, Pro Elec. Three amps, a little overpowered, but we'll do just fine. Switching power, pretty nice. Okay, plug this in, hopefully, not let any smoke out of anything. It's gotta stay in there. We know this. All right, contact. Reverse. All right, let's uh, put this in. One direction. There it is. Awesome. And then when it's in center position, we get nothing. Okay, I think she's ready for a test. Just took this upstairs to do the final testing on it. And as I was setting up camera and lights and everything, my wife was pretty anxious and started a roll to test it. And got this far through. You can see that it worked pretty well. And then she said, um, there's smoke coming out of it. And then it stopped. So I started digging through it and tried to figure out what was going on. And the motor burned out. I've looked at the wiring. The wiring is fine. I think this is just a bad motor. And I've got it set up here so you can see what happens. We might make some more smoke, maybe a little flash. Yeah, you can see that it starts to go little flash of bad stuff in there and it doesn't go. It's not under excessive load or anything either. If I can pull this completely out and it still does the same thing. So this motor was rated for much higher load than we'd 
ever put on it. So I'm gonna have to replace this motor and I probably should buy one from Newark next time. That's all we have for today. If I had more time, I probably would have put in a speed control circuit for the motor. But to get it into that small space that we had, probably would have had to design a custom PCB, and I just didn't want to go that route. How would you have approached the solution to rolling up labels? Would you use the same components, or maybe a completely different approach to this? Let us know in the Element 14 community at element14.com presents. See you next time.